Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wooler for the Mitochondria Mastery course. This is a course content sample video. The title here is The Role of Vitamin B2 in Mitochondria Function. So when we think of mitochondria or just cellular metabolism with regards to glucose, of course that would also bring in things like fats and proteins, but Glucose through glycolysis produces pyruvate or pyruvic acid. And through glycolysis, we do produce some ATP, essentially a net two ATP through this early step process. But once we enter the Krebs cycle, and that occurs through acetyl coenzyme A, and then we enter the electron transport chain is where we produce a robust amount of ATP, that cellular energy currency that all of our cells need in order to function properly. And what's amazing about the human body is if we think about the amount of ATP that gets produced on a moment to moment basis, it's, you know, in the, in the, in the billions, um, if not more, just the normal function of our body just normal day-to-day -day, day -day activity requires a tremendous amount of ATP and normal function of the mitochondria to occur. Now, I don't want to oversimplify this because there's a lot of nutrients that are important for mitochondrial function, but I want to just highlight one in particular called riboflavin. Now, you can actually measure riboflavin through various tests. This is actually a screenshot of an organic acid marker called glutaric acid. Generally what happens is that when glutaric acid is elevated, it indicates a deficiency of vitamin B2 or riboflavin. So you can see in this case, this patient has a deficiency of B2. Now riboflavin is found in many different types of foods. So eggs, green vegetables, dairy products, meat, milk, almonds, for example. It is a cofactor in many different biochemical reactions. So for example, it's part of the enzyme cofactors for what's called flavin adenine dinucleotide and flavin mononucleotide. And this plays a critical role in mitochondrial activity. Okay, so riboflavin gets into the cells, is used within the mitochondria uh, to act as a very important cofactor within the electron transport chain. We'll, we'll show that to you here in a second. Now there's many other biochemical roles. So for example, in the methylation cycle, riboflavin is needed for the activation of MTHFR. MTHFR, most people know about it as the activator of inactive to active folate. And I don't want to make it state or make it sound like there's a, a relatively less important form of folate because the form of folate that gets converted into 5-methylfolate is called 5,10-methylene tetrahydrofolate and that is actually critically important for nucleic acid production. But the 5-methylfolate plays a big role in what's called methionine synthase activity for the conversion of homocysteine to methionine as a main reaction within the methylation cycle. So very simplistically, you could think of riboflavin as a key factor in methylation and folate biochemistry. So the electron transport chain is a key component of the mitochondria where it's transferring electrons through a chemical process, through these different complexes for the formation of water and the eventual production of ATP through what's called ATP synthase, sometimes called complex five of the electron transport chain. But you'll notice that flavin mononucleotide and flavin protein or adenine dinucleotide are part of complex one and two. And so riboflavin plays a critical role in the early stages of electron transport chain activity. It plays a big role in complex two. What's interesting about complex two 
is it's directly connected to the Krebs cycle through the enzyme called succinic dehydrogenase. And so deficiencies of riboflavin will greatly impact complex one and complex two. Now, one of the things you keep in mind about maximal ATP production through the electron transport chain is that the maximal amount of ATP gets produced when we initiate electron transport chain activity at complex one. It's not that we can't get ATP produced if we activate it at later stages, we just don't get as much. So for maximal production, we have to engage or activate complex one for that to occur. Ubiquinone or CoQ10 is another important nutrient of the electron transport chain. And that too is measured through organic acid testing through a marker called 3-hydroxy-3-methylbutyric. And so we talk about this in the mitochondria mastery course, which testing is out there that is available to assess these different nutrients. One of them is the organic acid profiles. So there are some other biochemistry that is related to riboflavin. Okay, I mentioned the electron transport chain is, is very important. It turns out that active B6 requires FAD from riboflavin. The oxidation of pyruvic acid, alpha-ketoglutaric acid and branch chain amino acids also require riboflavin through its form FAD. This plays a big role. Pyruvic acid, for example, has to be converted to acetylcoenzyme A to enter the Krebs cycle. Alpha-ketoglutaric acid is another entry point into Krebs cycle activity. Fatty acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase requires, so this is important for fatty acid oxidation. Retinol to retinoic acid requires riboflavin. As I mentioned before, MTHFR for the formation of L-methylfolate, that is important for the methylation of cobalamin sitting within the methionine synthase enzyme complex for the conversion of homocysteine to methionine is also dependent on riboflavin. Glutathione production is important or is dependent on riboflavin. Another interesting aspect is vitamin B3 or niacin that also requires FAD. So if we are riboflavin deficient, we're going to compromise things at many different levels biochemically, okay, not just the mitochondria, but the mitochondria in various ways is greatly affected through a riboflavin deficiency. In fact, when you look at organic acid testing, it's so common to actually see people riboflavin deficient. And if you think about things biochemically, and you think about things from a clinical standpoint, when somebody is under a tremendous amount of stress metabolically from some type of chronic illness, the way to look at these different nutrients is which ones tend to get used up pretty quickly or that we need a constant supply of and riboflavin would certainly fall into that category. Now, I'm Dr. Kurt Wooler. I am the course instructor for the Mitochondria Master Course. I've been an integrative and functional medicine physician since the late 90s. I do a tremendous amount of speaking throughout the US as well as internationally. I'm an author, educator, and practicing clinician. I do a tremendous amount of clinical education for Great Plains Laboratory, as well as Integrated Medicine Academy, which hosts the Mitochondria Mastery Course, as well as many of our other mastery courses. I'm co-founder and education director of Integrated Medicine Academy, as well as Functional Medicine Clinical Rounds, which is a membership website for healthcare practitioners. And then in my own practice, I work a lot with the autism community now for the past number of decades. I work with patients with chronic and environmental induced health conditions as well. So I would encourage you to look at the information on the Mitochondria Mastery Course website for more information about the Mitochondria Mastery Course. One of the things that we always incorporate into our courses is thinking critically and thinking clinically about the information. So again, for more information, go to Mitochondria Mastery Course. Dot com. Again, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrated Medicine Academy. Thank you.